The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by Tenet Controls, makers of lighting kits, soundboards, and more. Tenet Controls brings your models to life. Welcome everyone to part one of our Clash of the Titans Release the Kraken buildup. I mentioned I was going to be doing this uh, buildup series here on the channel uh, about a week or so ago. And uh, I just got the kit here a couple of days ago, it came in the mail. I picked this up off of eBay. It was a little bit expensive, but I once I saw it, I decided I really wanted to get it. Uh, these kits are really rare now. This is an original geometric kit, which geometric is long gone now. And uh, this is one of the original releases. It's not a recast. It's uh, the original resin material, which uh, makes for it to be really heavy and really solid. These are uh, beautiful uh, resin cast pieces. I've had a look at these all up close, and they're beautifully done. I don't see any pitting or anything like that. I did a little bit of uh, testing, you know, trying his arms on the body, trying his head on the body and everything. And everything fits pretty good. We're going to have to do a little bit of putty around the seams like usual, but... Uh, nothing serious so we're gonna start out today by giving you guys an up-close look here is the uh, box that it comes in with the box art uh, depicting the Kraken at the end of the movie Clash of the Titans uh, the kit comes with the Kraken figure it comes with these two kind of big rock formations here a little bit of the uh, sea where he's coming up out of it and you also get a small little figure of Perseus holding up Medusa's head there just about He's just about ready to turn the crack into stone. I hope that's not a spoiler for you if you haven't seen the movie. But uh, uh, We also have Andromeda, the uh, female sort of victim there. And she's kind of cast right into the rocks. But uh, the Perseus figure is a separate little casting, which is nice. So uh, it's a really nice kit. I had a lot of fun doing the Medusa, so I've uh, decided to build a few more of these. And I'll probably be doing a few more down the line. But the uh, Kraken's going to keep us busy for a little while. I'll show you these parts up close. First we'll take a look at the uh, torso here and you can see the beautiful detail on this with all the muscle structure and the scales and the uh, detail here on his back with the uh, sort of razorback spine that we have on this. It's just really really nice and it's really accurate to the way the figure looked in the movie. The Medusa that we did wasn't exactly uh, you know an exact duplicate of the of the uh, figure that was in the actual film the actual figure that Ray Harryhausen created but this is an exact duplicate of the uh, Kraken as it was seen in the movie, so it's really cool. And you can see uh, it's just beautifully done. There aren't any issues with the mold or anything. And this is a super thick, heavy piece here. It probably weighs about a pound or two at least. It's really thick and really heavy. Here we have his head. I'll uh, bring that a little closer so you can see it. The detail on this with all of his uh, sort of gills and fins and everything is really nice on that. And around his eyes, we have the little piece here that inserts for his lower jaw. The detail on the teeth and everything is really nicely done around his eyes. A little bit more of that spine detail and scales on the back side there. So there's a nice opportunity to do a lot of detail painting on this which we're really going to enjoy. We're going to be using our craft acrylic paints again on this. They work so well on Medusa they'll work really good on this too. So here is uh, one of his arms. You can see the beautiful detail on the segments there and all the scales and all that and the detail on his hand with the claws and all that on the bottom he has sort of a suction cup almost like an octopus really really detailed really nice mold they all kind of look the same so we'll kind of skip over those here's the uh, the left side rock formation that as I mentioned it has Andromeda cast into it so we're going to have to uh, be careful painting that to make her kind of stand out from the rest of the rocks but the detail is really beautiful on these. It's going to be a lot of fun adding all the texture and all that on there. You can see it has some kind of wave action uh, cast into it where the water's, you know, splashing up against the rocks here. There's a little spot molded, a little flat spot here where the uh, small little Perseus figure gets mounted. 
You can see he's holding up Medusa's head there. He's got a little bit of flash in his casting, but it's nothing that won't clean up really easily. If I can get him closer without this blurring. It's pretty nice casting. Uh, pretty reasonable for the scale that he is. We should be able to paint him up and make him look pretty good. Got the little uh, uh, detail down here on the bottom with the little kind of red bag that he was carrying the Medusa's head in. So we'll do that too. And Medusa's head there, you can see. He kind of sits uh, something like this. We'll probably have to trim this down a little bit to get it to sit in there real good, but that's where he goes right there. And it's pretty cool. And then we have the right side rock, which has a nice Clash of the Titans logo on it there. But again, beautiful mold here. Really looks like realistic rocks on the front and the back. You can see it's got a little slot here. This kind of butts up against the, uh, the water detail here. This is actually waves of water that the... Uh, Kraken sits in. He kind of sits something like this. We can get him in there. I'll move this back and just give you a kind of a brief look at how it, over, it will look overall here. So you can maybe get an idea of the size of it too. But he kind of sits like that. And this rock here goes, butts up against it like that. And this one goes like that. So you can see the... Uh, you know the overall size it's gonna be pretty cool now I'll get a piece a piece of wood later and mount this on there but you can see we've got a nice uh, nice you know nicely scaled by the time you get his head and everything on there he's gonna look really really good and uh, so that's a basic look at the parts now what we're gonna to have to do in the first step like you have to do with any of these resin kits or basically any model kit it's important that we clean all these parts now just handling them I can kinda of feel a little bit of oil on my uh, fingers so there's some pretty serious mold release agent on this and that could interfere with our painting uh, cause it not to stick or actually cause it to uh, you know react and do weird things so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take all these parts inside in my kitchen sink and I'm going to run some nice hot water and mix it with some Dawn dishwashing detergent which is uh, cheap and it works uh, really effective for getting rid of any kind of grease or oil or anything that might be on this I'll take a little scrub brush and make sure I get down in all these little crevices and everything and wash these really good and then we'll let them dry and then uh, they'll be ready to go and ready to uh, start doing our paint work. We're going to be doing uh, our painting with the uh, craft acrylic paints like I used on the Medusa. They worked really great on that. We're going to be using a combination of airbrushing, dry brushing, a bunch of different techniques on this and we'll uh, show you that whole detail as we go through this build series. I'm not sure how long of a series it'll be. Probably won't take that long, maybe three or four parts and we'll get this all done. Uh, what we're going to start out doing today is we're going to assemble the uh, Kraken figure itself. We're going to get its arms attached, its head mounted and everything. And then we've got to start doing a little bit of putty work to it to fill in the seams. I test fitted everything and uh, all the parts seem to uh, fit pretty good. Uh, some minor gaps here and there, but we're going to use our Vallejo uh, acrylic putty, which worked really great on the Medusa figure, so we're going to use that again. and. Uh, get this guy all cleaned up and then we can start doing our painting so let me uh, pause for a second here go wash these parts and I'll come back and we'll start putting the big guy together be right back everyone all right well we returned from washing off all the parts now as you can see I've got everything set back up on the bench cleared everything else off here and we've got just the uh, parts for our Kraken figure uh, so I've had these drying for about an hour or so. I used a combination of Dawn and some Mr. Clean to get this thing squeaky clean. There's some parts on here that are kind of unusual. You can see um, that uh, there's a little bit of gloss, kind of weird, like the casting got, uh, you know, a little glossy in some spots, but it's, uh, it's perfectly clean, so it's ready to go. I don't feel that sticky oil on my fingers anymore when I touch it. So uh, we're just about ready to start doing the assembly. Uh, but what we want to do is before we do that is we're going to go around I notice when I look at his hands and stuff here that there's a little bit of flash in between some of the you know finger joints and some little areas here and there on the uh, detail and we want to get rid of that it'll be easier to do that now than it is uh, or when it will be when we have it all glued together so we're going to work on that first this one here I notice it has uh, the worst so what I've got is I've just got a little piece of 320 grit sandpaper here just standard sandpaper and I'm just going to work uh, in these little cracks here a little bit and resin sands down really fast and really easy so uh, we're just going to clean this up a little bit and get rid of that a little bit of that extra molding flash that was in there 
I'll just kind of make a little half circle here and, and uh, let it fit right down in there and do its work for me here. Just cleaning them up a little bit. Don't want to sand off all that nice raised detail that's on there though. It's got some beautiful, beautiful work that they did on this casting. And it's cleaning up really fast, like I thought it would. Now if we were going to be doing some really heavy sanding and stuff with this resin, um, you definitely want to wear a respirator because resin, this resin cast material is not good for your lungs. Uh, I know a lot of us guys that, a lot of the guys on YouTube that do videos of this stuff and they, they're working on it, it's kind of hard to talk and do the work at the same time so they don't wear a mask when they're shooting their videos but I'm pretty sure they're wearing masks when they're off camera and they're doing all this heavy work because this dust that comes off of this is really some nasty stuff but we're not going to worry about that here because we're just doing a real you know fine little bit of sanding here nothing major yeah, that first one that we touched there that was kind of the worst one this one isn't too bad at all we'll kind of get these out of the way Look at this one. It's definitely better than the other one was. Not bad at all. Just go over it a little bit here. <clears throat> okay. The rest of it looks pretty darn good. Look at his mouth here. That looks good. The head, I didn't see anything bad on that when I looked at it earlier. said this resin it sands down really fast and we got that cleaned up okay he looks pretty good we'll check out the main part of his body here just looking at these fin details See just a few little spots on those. It's nice when you get one that's not real terrible where you have to do hours and hours of cleanup and filling pits and all that. That happens quite a bit on resin stuff. But I haven't seen a single pit in this entire mold, so I'm really pleased with that. Geometric, uh, I never heard of them before, you know, again, not having done too many resin kits, but or uh, figure kits, but uh, doing some research on it, they were uh, considered a pretty uh, quality uh, kit manufacturer when they were around, and a lot of people were disappointed when they uh, went out of business, because they produ produced some really cool stuff. But again, there's some... You know, you can still find some of the stuff out there. Some of the old kits are still around, and there's vinyl recasts. And, you know, there's kind of a raging debate about whether recasts are, you know, cool or not. But if there's nothing else available, I mean, you have to get what you can get. So that's kind of the way I look at it. Okay, so there we go. He's cleaned up already. I don't see anything else major on this that uh, needs any attention. So we're ready to... Uh, start gluing them together. Now what I'll be using here is I've got some regular uh, of the thicker type CA. It's more like of a gel type CA. It's a, kind of a medium uh, 
viscosity. You can get this in even thicker than this, or you can get it really runny. This stuff I can control pretty well, and it won't take a whole lot um, of this to glue it together. Uh, it dries kind of, you know, semi-fast, and we'll kind of get our part locked on. We'll have enough uh, time to adjust it a little bit, and then we're going to hit it with a little bit of this activator here called Zip Kicker, which uh, makes it dry really rapidly. So I think what we're going to do first is we're going to start putting on his arms. Just kind of take a look and see how they go. It looks like that one is about like that. Now I've got a picture here um, that I'll tilt up and show you. I'm using this as a uh, reference picture. It's a picture of the original kit, a really nicely done model that somebody built. So not only the positioning of his arms and everything I can find out from that, but I believe that the paint job on this is done really, really nice. It looks pretty accurate to the, uh, the way he looked in the film. So we're going to use that as a paint guide as well. So we'll kind of get back over here. But uh, it looks like this arm down here is kind of in this position. And then we've got his other right arm kind of that goes up around like this. And just checking it out. You can see that there's a you know there's a little bit of a little bit of a gap in it here and there, but nothing nothing super bad. Let me just kind of see how that's gonna look. Okay, so I think we're gonna go for this one here first. So I'm gonna put a little bit of CA on the body and a little bit on the arm itself. Now again, um, as I talked about in the uh, Medusa video, that um, we some of these guys they will go ahead and pin this stuff, um, but this this uh, material it works and reacts really well with um, CA glue, so it's going to be really strong once it once it decides to settle down. I mean, it's going to be almost unbreakable. I just have to hold it here for a couple of seconds to let it grab. It's going to take just a little bit here, guys. I don't want to rush things. Let me see if I can kind of get this up here like this, and I'll get my uh, kicker, and we'll hit that. It'll creep itself right down inside there, and settle that down real quick and I keep my compressed air here handy we'll blow off that extra quick kicker and you can see we got a little bit of a now there's going to be a few gaps on them here and there but that's not to worry um, our putty that we're going to be using is going to take care of that now we can come back over here and check out his other arm. It looks like it sits on there just like that. So we'll repeat the same procedure. This stuff will, like I said, it, it's like capillary action. It'll it'll sneak itself right in there and grab a hold of that and set it almost instantly. The beauty of that is that the uh, before you use the kicker, you have a little bit of time to work with it before it'll, you know. So if you don't get the part on there exactly where you wanted it to. You can move it just a little bit before it sets up. This hand is kind of up in the air as we can see. Okay, so I'm just kind of checking that out.
free here. You can see where it's uh, got a certain spot where it wants to sit. Okay, get rid of that excess again. Pretty nice. Okay. And that one's got a perfect spot where it sits too. So it's all working out good, guys. Stay in camera here for you. <clears throat> All right. It's already looking like something, huh? You can see, let me hold this up closer for you, that uh, not everything is perfect. You can see that we've got a little bit of a gap right here. Um, but we're going to take care of that with our putty. That's not a problem. It might take a couple of goes to have that fill, but we've got this nice little Vallejo putty here with that applicator tool. We can get right in there and start putting that in and fill that in real nice. We'll take a Q-tip and just kind of work it down on there. So let's go for his head now. We're going to do his mouth, uh, get that in there first. good. Sorry I probably doesn't taste too good, does it, buddy? <laughs> okay. Let's see how that makes sure that that took on there. It sure did. And there's his face. Got a little bit of a seam down here around the edges, but again, we'll take care of that. Now let's just kind of do a test fitting on his head here. Make sure everything lines up pretty decent. I have a little bit of a gap in it, but not a problem. Okay, we're ready to go for it. Got a certain little spot that it sits in there. I want to make sure I nail it. Keeping his, make sure to keep his spine straight back there. Have a little bit drip out on the bottom. We'll get that before it makes any problem. Okay, hit it with the kicker. already looking pretty darn cool here. I'll hold them up for you. This thing weighs a ton. But you can see on the back here we've got a little bit of a, a seam there on his neck. And that's not a problem. Um, so we don't even really have to wait here. To this. Let's go ahead and uh, start putting the putty down on him. 
And uh, again, we've got this uh, Vallejo acrylic putty. Uh, started using this stuff. Uh, uh, talking about Chris Cortell again, that I re referenced a lot on the Medusa build. Uh, Chris uh, uses this stuff exclusively on uh, a lot of his figure kits, and it you can see why. I mean, it does a great job, and with this little applicator tip, um, it works great for doing this kind of work. Let me get you in a little bit closer here and we'll tip up a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. Let me just start off on his neck here. This applicator tip you can usually get into just about every nook and cranny which makes it really nice we're not worried just yet about making it smooth or anything we're just forcing it inside that gap we don't want it to be just on top of it we want it to actually get inside there so it doesn't uh, sink in too far and uh, shrink in there and leave a you know a depression we want it to be smooth on the surface okay and we've gone all the way around the neck Just using the tip to uh, flatten it out a little bit and make sure it's in there all the way. Okay, now we'll go around here and do his jaw. Just going to force it in here on the edges. This stuff doesn't dry very fast, so you got plenty of time to work with it. No need to be in a hurry. In fact, I think it dries a little slower than, um, I like to use that perfect plastic putty too, but I think this stuff dries a little bit slower than that. It takes a good couple hours before it's completely ready to sand. Okay, so we got that done. Now we're going to start going around the arm here, this first one, which has got a pretty good size gap in it. Great. Okay, we'll just kind of show you what we're doing there. And again, that might take a couple times, you know, it, it might sink in a little bit and and then you might have to do it once or twice to get it to come to where it's flush with the rest of the surface, but uh, no big deal. Okay, that's looking great. Head over here to the last two arms. These on this side seem to feel a little bit better.
Now you could uh, play around and do some sanding and all that and shaping if you wanted to to really make them, you know, fit perfectly well together, but uh, they were close enough and I didn't see anything that was uh, off by a whole lot, so I just decided to go ahead and go for it, like I said, and then just make up the difference with this putty, which you won't even be able to tell when we're all done here. Hopefully that's the that's the objective anyway. That's the plan. I think I keep going out of camera. I'm going to back this up a little bit for you guys. And come over this way a little bit more. Okay, let's go around this part. This little tube of this putty will last you for quite a while too. It's you know it's the the tip is really efficient. It doesn't put out a whole blob of it. You don't really, really wind up wasting any of it, so it's pretty good stuff. there guys just got to get around the back side of this spot here and uh, okay <clears throat> call that a done deal for our first application and what I'm going to do now is grab a q-tip a couple of them here and just put a little bit of water on it and uh, we'll just gently go around this thing just smoothing it out just a little bit and packing it in there um, and what we're also going to you know do here is we're going to kind of spread it out just a little bit and wipe off the excess on the edges and that'll make it sort of blend in now he has this you know rough texture on his body here so we can do this little kind of tamping action here and you know get it to uh, kind of match that as close as possible Excess here. Whenever it starts getting kind of gooey, just take your uh, water and rinse off that tip again. I keep a little pump spray bottle here handy with me all the time. I'm always using it for wet sanding and doing stuff like that. <clears throat> this is working out primo here, guys. So just sort of spread it out and get it in there. It'll dry flat. By the time it's painted, you won't even be able to tell. Good thing about this is that his body is uh, really, like I said, really rough already. So uh, we can hide some imperfections there okay a little bit more water kind of blending it in as you see I'm just sort of spreading it out a little bit okay let's go for his neck now switch q-tips gets to a point where they just get they start falling apart so it's time to switch
Sorry if I move out of the camera, guys. I'm just looking at them up close. <clears throat> okay, working our way around. Got some jagged stuff in there that's tearing off my Q tip here. Make sure we get that out of there. big blob of anything in there just spreading it out YouTube. There's a little kind of a high spot right here on his neck that I'll probably have to sand down just a little bit, but no big deal. We'll sand it a little bit and then we'll um, apply some more putty if we have to. All right, let's move on to these last two arms. You can see how fast this is going. It's not bad at all. Like I said, this is some uh, nice, nice putty to work with. Good call on that one, Chris. He's been Chris Cortell. He's been doing this for so long that uh, he's got all this stuff figured out like a science. So might as well learn from one of the best and follow his tips instead of trying to do it the hard way. Got it kind of thick there in his armpit so I'm just going to squirt some water right up in there and let that break that down. Just kind of smooths itself right out and flows in there like it should. Works great. See, I'm just kind of smoothing it out, spreading it out just a little bit so it looks like it blends in with the rest of his texture here. Got kind of a big piece there in the middle that I can't get to. I'm going to have to get in there with my hobby knife and just kind of work that out of there. that smoothed out.
Okay, boys and girls, we've already made a lot of progress here. Um, I'll hold them up here for you, and uh, we'll kind of go around them. You can see that we've already made a lot of that disappear. The uh, filler is a little bit more of a white color than the uh, sort of light gray that this is molded in, but uh, once we... Uh, I'm actually going to prime this guy because I'm going to be using uh, mostly darker colors on him. We're going with a dark green base coat first, and then we're going to start adding in, as you saw in the picture there, he's kind of a, a dark green with some lighter highlights on his scales and things like that. And then he's got sort of a, some, uh, you know, almost some rust-colored brown, medium, medium to dark brown going on in his abdomen here and up around some of the detail on his head and all that on the bottom side of his arms on this kind of suction cup area and a little bit on his claws so we'll do our green uh, base coat first and uh, but we're gonna prime them so uh, that's gonna be a wrap for this one guys we're gonna uh, come back in part two and um, I think what I'm gonna be doing in part two is I'm gonna start painting on some of the water detail first and maybe some of the rocks we'll save the uh, painting of the crack until the end and that that way that'll be the kind of saving the funnest part for the very end of it but uh, there's a look at uh, some basic techniques for putting together one of these figures using these materials here I'll look at it after it's all dry and everything and then I may have to go back and touch up with some putty here and there but uh, I'll be using the you, you guys won't be missing anything I'll be using the same basic concept that I did here and until I get it all to my liking and uh, then we'll put some primer on them and we'll, we put the primer on there we'll be able to see if there's any you know little imperfections and that kind of makes those show up a little bit better and then we'll just touch up as we can go along because we can go back and put more of the putty over top of the primer if we have to and then reprime it again but uh, this is going to be really cool I'm really excited about it it's going to be neat okay guys take care out there we'll see you next time until we do happy modeling everyone